face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to an episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week, we're looking upon one of the rarest combo in the game, being the bulky Elytri type. And there aren't really that many. We are looking upon the two that I believe are statuarized as one of the strongest variants. These are going to be, of course, Afros, of course, introduced generation 2, versus Electros, introduced generation 5. So, yeah, as stated, very, very rare occurrence. Usually, when there are a bulk electric type in mind, they usually have a primary typing that does it save them the hassles, that of course, a rolling wash or a lantern, for example. But as stated, fairly rare, and these two are sole electric types, and therefore makes the dialogue a bit more interesting, in my opinion. Now, we're going to go, of course, their stats, abilities, and move pool to decide which one of these two really are better. So first and foremost, let's talk about Electric as a defensive typing. Now, the typing itself Electric aren't complementing a lot of other situations or typing combination, but resisting the likes of Electric Fly and Steel are a very strong combination, and only one weakness in ground making that you can pinpoint your exact switching basically on the damage alone. And as stated, due to these being defensive, this do work to their favor quite a lot, mainly because it does presumably say that you can at least pinpoint how you want to act and what you want to deal with with those in mind and knowing probably how much damage you will be involved with them. That said though, these resistances are at best really really obscure and while it does complement it, it all also a thing here to keep in mind that there aren't a sole combination that these all three are combined just like being resistant to ground and rock is could be a very very strong thing to be. These aren't that really common with one another. You really see electric and flying for combination or even flying steel or electric steel for that matter or a very few stab combinations that have these in mind to be able to capitalize on output damage making electric type while a lot of resistance sets are being fairly redundant resistances at that. Now, when it comes to the stat between the both these Pokemon, they are fairly similar here, but Daphros has the edge here in its defensive bulk, having five, five base more in its HP, five base more in its defense, and 10 base more in its special defense, being of course 90, 85, and 90, and is slightly speeder in Electros on its 55 base speed versus the 50. It also should be stated here that Avros has 10 more in its special attack than Electros, but Electros does cover one very, very strange sporting stance here, which is attack in 115 or Avros 75, sporting 40 base more than Avros, making it more of a mixed attacker while Avros is forced to only cover the special role well. That said though, there are just as bulky as they come when it comes to electric time. While Avros being bulkier, it is just by slight differential, and even that is basically what we're gonna talk about, that whether or not if that's going to matter with these abilities in mind. Because while Ampharos does win the stat round, one really could say when it comes to abilities, there are no competition here. Ampharos sporting the plus and static, and while static does make for a fair um, ability for, of course, electric type and, of course, defensive mom being enforced and possibly paralyze your Pokemon if you're hit by a physical or contact move, of course, or a 30 percent chance, so that's a fair Fair chance of getting your opponent paralyzation, but Electros does pack the Levitate. And for a Pokemon only weak to ground, packing the Levitate, yeah, that's that's scary. That's very scary, actually. And it does definitely complement it that, you know, in the end of the day, for a sporting and defensive typing and with defensive stat to be immune to the likes of Spikes and Toxic Spike does make Electros overall defensively more uh, interesting than Avros, even though Avros packs his superior stats, the ability does make Electros a lot more desirable here. But as stated, a Pokemon is only as strong as it move will make it out to be, and of course the match is not over here, because Avros has a lot more sporting special attack than Electros has. So with that said, let's talk about the relevant moves and what are actually different between them. So first and foremost, let's actually talk about what they do share. And yeah, they get a few stabs in common. The one being you know, primarily is, of course, Thunder, Thunderbolt, Discharge, Volt Switch, and Wild Charge. So those are relevant moves to get with the likes of Thunder Wave. But outside of that, 
there actually aren't really that many. We have filler moves in Brick Break and whatnot, and of course the screens are something that both carry between one another. But really, besides that, they actually start to separating already. It has to do with, of course, what type of role they are filling. As said before, Abra has been defensively more capable here, while Electros has a mixed offensive stat, which actually means that they do stuff differently. So we're gonna actually start off with Abra, so what it does make it unique over Electros. So Ambrose has a pretty incredible array of moves. Now I'm just going to mention the foremost here is that we start about actually the plus ability already, which is maybe not the best ability overall, but it does learn Magnetic Flux, which works like Cosmic Power and boosts your defense and special defense by one stage. And this could be very good, and very good we actually learned another unique move being Heal Bell, which as a C move does make you recover your HP, or even the rest set with Sleep Talk Rest also works. A very cool thing for Ampharos to actually complements on. It also have actually Cotton Guard, which is a very very interesting move to raise your defense by 3, and we'll also have Cotton Spore, which lower the opponent's speed. And uh, as you guys already know, we have a Mega Pokemon with Ampharos, which does make it a bit more interesting because it does get the likes of Dragon Pulse and Fire Punch. Both of them, of course, complementing it fairly well together with the likes of the Power Gem and Signal Beam. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much where it all ends. They have a few niche moves between one another, but those are the ones that I feel are relevant. And quite frankly, you aren't going to capitalize on anything else with Ampharos in mind. But one should definitely be stated here that the Magnetic Flux set is something that does push it over a border. A little bit of a side note is it also learns the likes of Confused Ray, making this Pokemon very good at just existing and annoying and with the bulky mind, it might just very well be able to actually pull that off. Afros also gets Focus Blast, being one of the few electric types that have a special offensive move, which is very good for the likes of course the steel types that it could be facing and possibly fend it off. So it also of course makes it very very desirable as a C user due to that very reason alone. So with all this said, let's of course go and take a look on Electros. Now, due to Electros, of course, mixed offensive stat, it also gets, of course, a physical side, which is really, really cool for Electric type, mainly because it's not necessarily that common for it, and quite frankly, 115 makes it one of the strongest physical threats for the Electric side, only, of course, less stronger than the likes of Electabuzz and Luxray, and trust me, that's a rather rare trait. So with that said, first we're going to mention of course its defensive moves it does get and actually get the likes of Gastro Acid which nullifies uh, abilities completely which could be interesting for the likes of facing a Gliscor for example or anything with Lightning Rod be able to get rid of their abilities and actually start doing the hurt anyway. We also have Cole which boosts your attack and defense and raises your accuracy which could be very helpful for actually landing the likes of Sap Cannon and trust me this is one of the few programs that can pull that off really nicely. We also have Crunch as a filler move which is a fairly decent one to get where likes of Dragon Claw. Uh, on of course the special side here we have a really really weird move in Flamethrower which is a very very rare trait for any electric type. We have Rock Tomb. We have Acrobatics, we have Charge Bean, we have Grass Knot, which is very, very good for, of course, any electric type to have a Grass Filler to be able to deal with the ground types. We also have Rock Slide and Dragon Tail. And we also have the other Force Switching move in U Turn. So we both have U Turn and Volt Switch, both really cool to get the likes of Power Up Punch, which is also one of those really strange moves. Uh, we have on the Tutor side actually Aqua Tail, we have Bounce, Dragon Call, Drain Punch, Fire Punch, Focus Punch. And we have Giga Drain, Iron Tail, Knockoff, Magnet Rise, and we're capitalized on that since you're levitating, that ought to do the trick right. We also have Outrage, uh, we have Super Fang, Super Power, and Thunder Punch in case you don't want to capitalize on the Wild Charge. And last and foremost, I really should say that we also have Acid Spray, which lower your opponent's special defense by two stages, and also it's a poison type move. But overall here, there are a lot of moves here to be capitalized on, and of course, two recovery of physical moves, or special move, slightly. Attacking move that recover both in Drain Punch and, of course, in Giga Drain. Both being one of the better ones in the game, actually, and be able to capitalize on them makes this Pokemon a really 
bit of an interesting aspect to the Assault Vest variant, which was really popular in Generation 6, and still, in my honest opinion, are just as powerful. And due to knockoff, of course, this Pokemon can fill a supporting role to be able to annoy other Pokemon without being necessarily forceful about it. And of course, with Gastro Acid, it nullifies a lot of abilities that can actually annoy it itself. So yeah, I'm going to be completely frank here when it comes to these two Pokemon, I really just stated as it is. Avros has a very strong niche, with of course a Manetta Flux and Plus together with the likes of Focus Blast, making this Pokemon a very, very, very different being to of course be dealing with, and with C moves in mind, yeah, C Focus Blast does push it a bit over the edge when it comes to actually a defensive tank. But they both have the same type of issues, in that they're both being defensive, slower Pokemon and they lack recovery, which means that in the end of the day, this dialogue boils down to one thing. If you're not going to capitalize on leftovers, what can you do? And this is where I think Electros shines. Due to Giga Drain and Drain Punch, it does have a fair, reliable recovery. While Avros has C Heal Bell, and while I would push it for being a different aspect to it that it could be viable for it with Manetta Flux, it's not a fair reliable recovery, so even with the extra defenses and extra speed, it doesn't make a difference when it comes to matchup we will be facing. Electros, due to its ability, is able to actually, of course, get immunity, what it's weak to, but also have that passive recovery in its offensive moves outside of leftovers, making it, in my opinion, a stronger moment between the two. The filler moves and, you know, the broad array of offensive moves that it does learn really just adds to bonus. Having Grasna, for example, I do believe it's a huge thing for any electric type, so it's really easy and fair for me to say that Electros here is the winner between these two. But yeah, that said though, I really like both of these Pokemon. I think Afros is definitely one of those Pokemon that I don't see getting enough love, and it's really cool to see that this Pokemon gets small buffs each generation outside of, of course, its Mega Form. And I'm really looking forward to see if anyone will be able to capitalize on you know, the agility set with Magnetic Flux before Mega Evolving, I definitely believe the Mega form of Mega Amphros is the bit more interesting between them two, and quite frankly, I would definitely want to see that flourish. Uh, but that said, Electros, as just a standalone Pokemon, is an immediate threat, and while it doesn't have the well-rounded stats in Amphros, its abilities and a way of capitalizing on its move pool really just make it so unpredictable and really just overall better just because it's able to match off the opponents that Avros simply cannot. Giga Drain, Grass Nut, yeah, they stand out to the likes of being physical and capitalize on C Hydro Vortex. Yeah, Aqua Tail makes a big difference here, and quite frankly, in the end of the day, Electros just has the options to do a lot more than Avros ever could do. I really hope this change in the future, but for the moment, Electros is the stronger here. So yeah, with that said guys, thank you of course as always for watching, and join us next time where we're going to look upon these two incredible mons.